I think the test that primary voters are going to apply for every candidate is they're not looking for a campaign conservative. They're not looking for someone who talks a good game on the campaign trail. They want someone who's walked the walk. Before I was in the Senate, I was the Solicitor General of Texas, the chief lawyer for the state in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. We defended the Ten Commandments monument on the state capitol grounds, went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and won 5-4. We defended the Pledge of Allegiance, the words One Nation Under God, went to the Supreme Court, won unanimously. We defended the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, went to the Supreme Court, won 5-4. We defended U.S. sovereignty, standing up to the World Court and the United Nations and even President George W. Bush and won 6-3. And indeed, in private practice, I was very proud to represent over 3 million veterans, pro bono for free, defending the Mojave Desert Veterans Memorial, a lone white Latin cross erected over 70 years ago to honor the men and women who gave their lives in World War I. We defended that, that Veterans Memorial, went to the Supreme Court, and won 5-4. As you know, that was a lot of the reason I was elected to the Senate, because I had a long proven record of standing and fighting for conservative principles and winning over and over and over again. But fast forward to the Senate. We had fight after fight after fight in the Senate where we won. The first major fight of my tenure was the fight to defend the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Following the tragic shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, President Obama and Harry Reid led an assault, not on going after violent criminals, which is what they should have done, but instead going after the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens. And I led the fight to protect the Second Amendment in the U.S. Senate, and we defeated President Obama's efforts to undermine our rights. Another example that played out not long after that was Chuck Schumer and the Democrats' amnesty proposal where they came out with a massive amnesty proposal. It was striking in Cleveland that a majority of the candidates on that stage have all previously advocated for amnesty. I have never supported amnesty. I've always opposed amnesty, and I was proud to help lead the fight to defeat President Obama's amnesty proposal. I stood side by side with Senator Jeff Sessions in defeating amnesty. I'll point to with regard to Israel. When President Obama and the FAA banned flights into the nation of Israel, I publicly called out whether that was an economic boycott on the nation of Israel. Within 36 hours, they lifted the flight ban on the nation of Israel. And indeed, I'll point to something else that is particularly relevant here in Chattanooga. Chattanooga sadly joins the many communities across this country that have been the victims of radical Islamic terrorism, something the men and women here understand very personally. Well, Texas unfortunately shares that experience, and Fort Hood, which I'm proud to represent, was the site of a terrorist attack over five years ago, Nadal Hassan, and for over five years, the Obama administration refused to acknowledge that that was radical Islamic terrorism. Instead, they characterized it as workplace violence. Well, I'll tell you, I was proud as the senator of Tex from representing Texas to introduce legislation mandating that the soldiers who were murdered at Fort Hood by Nadal Hassan would be eligible for the Purple Heart and would receive the Purple Heart. The Obama Pentagon fought me on that. They opposed it tooth and nail. I was incredibly encouraged to earn the support of both Democrats and Republicans on the Senate Armed Services Committee. We passed it into law in December and in April of this year, five years too late, but in April of this, this year, finally, 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 those soldiers were awarded the Purple Heart.